Hawks, fall back! Get to the tower! Destroy the launch pad! Let none escape! <laughs> So the thing is, at the time of this recording, March 2024, Hasbro hasn't even acknowledged the existence of this figure. Outside of an early review a few months back of potentially questionable circumstances, not judging though, this seems to be the first the community is seeing of Studio Series 110 Shockwave from the 2018 Bumblebee film which is randomly released in Australia via the dwindling Maya chain of department stores. And it's not the first time Maya in Australia has had random releases show up. I'm pretty sure I was the first to review Titan Fortress Maximus from Maya. I just so happened to stumble across it one day. Yeah, okay, that was a lie. It was more like, where in the world's come in San Diego? I really hunted that down. Yeah, but we digress. Again, as of the time of this recording, Little is known about Shockwave from a design team and production aspect. For the most part, Shockwave is a reasonable depiction of his on-screen counterpart. He can pull off the main pose he's known for in the opening scene, albeit with some restrictions, which we'll get to soon. Shockwave does share some design elements, at least at a framework level, with Optimus Prime due to a limited production schedule of the opening Cybertron battle in Bumblebee. With the battle being a late addition to the film, at a glance, not overly noticeable, and to be honest, it doesn't really bother me. You know, they're both being Cybertronian robots with similar legs. Who am I to judge? Though mostly cast in a lovely gunmetal and deep purple plastic, there has been some dry brushing applied to a few areas, specifically the thighs, chest and shoulders, giving some nice detail. Shockwave's signature chest has a lovely translucent piece, which many will be pleased to know is an insert into the solid purple plastic surrounding it. Don't worry, it won't break on you. Tell me your clear plastic fears in the comments below. Shockwave's classic cyclonic ocular lens is ever present with a lovely deep shine, partly due to the light piping, which with the right light source looks logically fantastic, though it needs to be fairly direct. Articulation is pretty good, albeit with one unfortunate decision. The designers decided to put an arm swivel below the elbow rather than in the more common bicep swivel position, which as I alluded to earlier, restricts outward motion and therefore any cannon poses. I filmed a short earlier as a way to get my bearings around the toy and figure out how to pose it, etc, etc. A pose I wanted to do was the old arm behind the back pose, but I couldn't do it due to the placement of this joint. Otherwise, the figure has pretty good articulation. Head is on a restricted ball joint. Universal soldier. Soldiers. <laughs> Let's try that line again. Universal shoulders with a nice faux ratchet, though the shoulder pad does clash in certain positions. The aforementioned forearm swivel, 90 degree elbows, wrist swivel due to transformation joint, unrestricted waist rotation, universal hips, 360 degree mushroom peg rotation at thigh and knee, a 90 degree knee, limited ankle tilts, not that much more is needed for the stoic master of logic. The foot can point down due to transformation and there is an additional transformation joint in the thigh if you want it, but that's more for the H tank. So you probably don't want to use that much. Transformation on Shockwave is fairly easy with some nice tricks and won't take forever. Though he does just turn into an expected Cybertronian H-Tank, everything tabs in quite nicely and overall is quite solid, even if Shockwave does have a slight case of the visible head syndrome. When looked at from the side, 
The tank has a slight spider stance, at least to me anyway. Viewing the tank from the back is probably the weaker side. You've got visible head syndrome as discussed, but the cannon is quite hollow from the back too. Viewed from the front or angled in my opinion is best. The cannon is posable in this mode and the instructions don't show it extended, but I prefer it that way. In this mode, Shockwave has quite the stance. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Shockwave is just taking a nap. Look, I'd say overall, this is a lovely rendition of Shockwave and quite faithful to the screen. I recommend picking one up if you get the chance as it starts rolling out around the world. Thank you everyone for joining me into this deep look into Purple Logic. Till all are one. Thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe if you're not already. Like the video if you like the video. Please leave a comment about your favorite Shockwave and considering joining my Patreon. Link is down below.